I have so much stuff. Hi, welcome back to Katie Bug Creations. My name is Emily. I'm Katie Bug's mom. And this is my channel about crafting, but mostly cross stitch. Um, I am out here repping my red legs, number 19 Joey Votto today, because baseball's back. And it makes me happy that baseball's back because baseball game is, and stitching just perfect for me. So I have a ton of stuff to show because it has been a month since I recorded my last video. And I'm actually going to have to get my little journal book out to go through everything that I have talked to, that I want to talk about today. So the first thing I have are finishes and I don't just have finish finish. I have a fully finished object. Ta-da! Spring has sprung, the grass is riz. I wonder where the birdies is. This is something that my great grandfather used to say. Um, and my mother and my grandmother also say that my great great grandmother, which would have been his mother in law, uh, said it as well. And my papa, Doug, was the sweetest gentlest soul that ever existed ever um he was just just a delightful person he loved watching birds um, he loved flowers and this is something that i remember him saying when i was a little girl so it's just one of those appalachian country sayings um it just kind of sticks around. So I designed this myself and stitched it up and then Katie and I uh, finished it off with some foam core and a lot of hot glue, a burn for mommy. Don't worry, Katie was not doing the hot glue. And uh, she picked out the little uh, fabric around here, which is kind of blowing out there, but it's really cute. So that was my fully finished object and so I put that out uh, this I put that out a couple weeks ago which was very nice all right so I also have other finishes but some of these finishes also have haul involved so I'm gonna kind of go with haul as we get through it so the first thing I finished I showed this it was almost done last time was the katakana sampler from modern folk embroidery and so it was almost done and I have finished this off now this is stitched on 22 count Hardinger um, in DMC 517 and 93? 93 or 97 is the variegated. So this is the companion piece to the Hiragana sampler and both of these will be going to my brother uh, to hang up in his new house. So. so that was one thing. I finished that right after and then I finished a few days later after my last video I finished the jackalope from Lindy Stitches. So this is just, this is so cute. Um, and it is a joke between uh, me and my father-in-law. Uh, when I first started dating my husband, he uh, showed me a postcard with a jackalope on it and tried to convince me it was a real critter. So when I saw this, I just, I laughed so hard and I had to get it and stitch it for him. So this is actually my own floss conversion. Um, I didn't have any of the weeks. I don't tend to use weeks um, unless I've already got it. So uh, I have converted this. It's mostly DMC. Um, there are a few classic color works in there. I think the green of these leaves here is shamrock and the, uh, Pink there is clay pot. I do have the conversion on the on my Instagram. So if you're interested in the colors that I used, they're on Instagram. All right, so then I started something new. Well, this was not the next thing I stitched, this is the next thing I finished. This was a start and finish. So 
uh, Michelle Bendy and some other people were doing the Peruvian cat cell. So this is the cat's reflection sampler by Ana Aguayo of Peruvian Flair, Peruvian Flair, excuse me. And it is adorable. I love this so much. I saw it and it, you know, I have my kitties. So this is the Peruvian cat's cell. Um, and I did this on 40 count linen in vintage country mocha. And as you can see, I've still got like half of it here to do other stuff with. Um, and then I did this in silks from Almond m and Studio. So Ymir, who you've heard me talk about. So I did this in, I ordered new silk. And I did it in writer's chair. Ooh, it's not really showing up very well. So there's writer's chair and it's just got all this beautiful variegation. I did it in wine. This is a new skein of that. I, I absolutely demolished the old skein. And then in brass. So those are the colors that I used and it's, I'm just, I'm just tickled to death with it. I think that's so neat. I love the border. I love, I love how this one cat is kind of like surprised. I've seen that look on my cat's faces before. Oh, yes, we're in a different spot. This is my stitchy spot. Um, I am currently dealing with some uh, forced inactivity due to a severe case of plantar fasciitis. Fantastic. Okay. All right. So then what else have I worked on? Lots. Part of what I have done is I have been working on a Teresa Wensler fairy. So first of all, this is also part of my haul. This uh, frame is a, hang on, it's right here. A handy quick, I think, or handy clamp frame. Um, and so essentially it's, it's got the dowel and then it's got a Q-snap uh, clamp on it. And so you put it on there. Um, I am a little worried that my tension is off. Um, I feel like I'm pulling these stitches over here too much, but it'll work out. Um, I needed a frame because this is going to take so much beading and you can't do beads in a Q-snap. So, so I've gotten a lot of progress on this. You can see I've got most of her body, most of her wings. I've started getting over here. So I wanted to talk about Teresa Winsler's just a little bit. Um, these are gorgeous. They are also frustrating as all get out if you aren't prepared for it. Um, they, if you've never done a Teresa Winsler one, she only has one place to get her patterns now. Um, they take tons of blended floss, so you have to do it with two strands. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of um, quarter and three quarter stitches, so you need to do it over two. There are so many colors just in her skin that I, and so many blended flosses. I'm not sure how you would do a skin conversion if you wanted either. So those are things to think about. Um, the other thing is you need to just not worry about the back. This is gonna look like a full coverage piece when you're done on the back. Just, just embrace it. Try to keep the these bits neat, go from there. Okay, so I worked on that. Ew, it's got dust on it, no. Let's take a lint brush to it. So I worked on that. I have also been working on my travel project. Let me reach it. So I've been working on uh, the William Morris bird pillows. Not that I'm gonna turn these into a pillow, I have cats and two small children as you can see you know there's quilts hanging over the couch to protect it um but let me show you a picture of what this will look like okay so i am working on this bird right here i finished this one so i'm working on this one 
And this is the one I work on when the kids are outside or I'm waiting in the car. And last time I only had like this line. So I have gotten a big chunk of the border done. This piece is 200 by 200 stitches. So it's pretty large. Um, this is 14 count Navy Ada. So it's just your run of the mill Ada. All right, then I've worked on Moonstone, um, which I don't have the pattern on hand to show you, but it's one of the Carolyn Manning designs. I will try to insert pictures uh, in here if I remember. If not, everything will be linked below. So Moonstone, I have discovered that the easiest way to do this is to do all the diamonds in a column and just do the diamonds for a page and then fill in the triangles. That has turned out to be the easiest uh, thing I've found because the pattern can be a little dense. So I'm still kind of on the colors. Leanne at Small Town Stitches, she's doing the turquoise version instead of moonstone and I'm thinking oh I really wish I picked that one okay all right so I also worked a little bit on Miss Bingley's library Miss Bingley from library from Poem Street samplers and Pemberley has a few more windows and a door so this is on 28 count Carolina linen, one over one. I am not using Carolina linen again. This, I, or at least I'm not using lin, this Charles Craft. I don't like it. Um, you will see I did, I stitched the door up and down vertically so I would get the grain lines. I don't know if you can see that here or not, but it's going along. It's not as fast as I'd like, but it's going. Okay, now, then let's get into May. It's May stitching time. Now, usually in the cross stitch community, this means stitch mania, stitch sania. Um, I was talking with Leanne, again, of Small Town Stitches, and she and I were talking about it and going, you know, I'm not super comfortable with calling this mania. Um, Leanne was an EMT, she's now an RN. She has dealt with people who have been in the um, really bad manic episodes before. They can be dangerous to themselves, they can be dangerous to other people. I am bipolar. I'm type one, so this is not the, that's not the kind that you typically see depictions of in media. Um, but I do experience manic phases. Um, they're not severe. They and they generally come out to be irritability, um, paranoia, and not like, oh God, everybody's out to get me, but uh, taking things too seriously or too much to heart. Um, and for other people who are type one, again, irritability, paranoia, irrationality, risk-taking behavior, those are things that can do that. I've never experienced it that badly Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm also very well medicated. Um, so if I do have a manic phase now, I might be irritable and I might spend too much stuff on cross-stitching supplies, but it's not bad. But it's really, um, you don't wanna trivialize it, okay? And, okay, full disclosure, English professor moment. You're getting ready to have a linguistics lesson that you, nobody asked for. When a word or a phrase comes into a language for, for, for the first time or becomes used in a novel way, so in a new way, generally speaking, this is not, this is not a uh, hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, one of three things happens. It, is, it becomes normalized. So if it, is a, if it is a phrase that is of use to an existing power structure, it becomes normalized. So for example, social distancing. 
okay? This is, so, this is a phrase we n never considered before, but it has become incredibly useful and therefore it has become normalized. It becomes pejorative. So in the words gay and queer, which once meant, you know, gay meant happy, queer meant strange, those two words became pejorative um, as homosexuality became more open. Um, those words are being reclaimed, but they became pejorative or they become trivialized. Now, the pejorative and the trivialization generally happens when it is a word or a phrase that is not um, something that benefits the power structure. If it benefits the marginalized, then it's more likely to become pejorative or to become trivialized. Um, so if it has to deal with women, if it has to deal with the disabled, if it has to deal with race, if it has to deal with uh, sexual orientation, etc., then it's going to become that way. Now, I am in no way suggesting that people who came up with the idea of mania or who came, who are using stitch mania are doing so in a malicious uh, way. Okay, I'm not. This is just what happens to language. It's part of what language does, particularly in English. Um, but when you notice these things happening, if you make an effort to change it, then we can do better. And since mental illness particularly is so stigmatized and has, um, is so loaded, we, not doing that, um, it's, it's important because it's serious. It's a real issue that people face and we don't think about it enough. So we have come up with hashtag Mayfly May or hashtag Mayfly May stitching, or you can do hashtag Mellow May um, when it comes to your May stitching. So I'm doing Mayfly May, which, you know, people typically, they would do a new start each day. They would do a new start every other day and you start every weekday what I am doing for mine to flit about from project to project is I am going to make an effort to touch each one of my whips at least two days this month while also having a few new starts so the first thing I've been working on now I started this well before May but the first thing I've been working on is an Art Nouveau piece out of this book, Cross Stitch Art Nouveau by Barbara Hammett. She's the same person who did my um, William Morris design. And so this is based on, how did that, let me find it, Alphonse Mucha's artwork. So we have these three lovely ladies here. And I am working on the center one first because Katie decided that was the one that she wanted me to work on first. And so it's still in the cue snap because I'm trying to put in a couple strands of floss each day on this one. Um, so the bottom is done and I'm up here. Now I'm up there because I started it at the top and then I had to frog half of it and I did it again and then I had to frog half of that. And then I couldn't find what I'd messed up, so I restarted it and I'm saving the rest of the piece that I'd started it on to do Christmas ornaments because I am doing this on 14 count opalescent Ada. And while I've got this out, I'll show you another piece of my haul. This is a new needle minder with a galaxy in it. Isn't that cool? And I got, I have another one here. It's a little mandala. And then of course, it, and then the back is a little, it's got a little button. And so these came from Trisha Applegate at Silver Moon's Designs on Etsy. So they and they were very reasonable, good magnets. And she even sent me some thread drops as well. So thank you, Trisha. I really appreciated that and I really loved it. 
Um, this one just, I love it, especially. You know, I thought the Galaxy one was gonna be my favorite, but this one's my favorite. All right, so in the new starts for Mayfly May, see, I'm floating about from subject to subject. Anyway, um, one of the things that I saw that I wanted to do was a modern folk embroidery called the Quaker Medallion. So this, I, um, words, I'm an English professor. You'd think I'd be able to use them. I saw this pattern. I've been interested in Quakers lately. Um, Quakers usually haven't been my thing, but I've been seeing more and more people do them. I'm starting to get into them a little bit. So I saw this one. I thought it would be a good introduction to doing Quakers. This is 40 count linen, Newcastle linen, um, and picture this plus. So this is from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I've done the entire outside in Gentle Art Sampler Threads Current. And I thought for sure I was gonna have enough to do the whole thing. No, I didn't have enough to do the whole thing. And I don't know how big a skein of Gentle Art Sampler Threads is. I don't know if it's a full eight yards or not. Um, but there was no way I was gonna get it all done. So then I was trying to figure out, okay, great. What am I gonna add? What am I gonna do? So I picked out uh, DMC 3750, which is that blue. And I am not a patriotic stitcher. I do not do the Americana thing, but I guess this will be a nice summary piece and I'll just display it out there. And again, I'm going to have another half piece of linen. Would you love my stack going? Okay, so that was my first Mayfly May piece. My second Mayfly May piece is, well, okay, I'm not gonna take it off. I'll just hold it up. Because this is on, I've been working on this today. This is my lap frame. Um, I have a Case Creations lap frame. So what I'm working on is eggplant, an eggplant seed packet. So this is from June Grigg Designs. Um, these are out of print but you can see this is the one I'm working on right here. Um, I have done two other ones. I've done the sweet corn and the watermelon from the two of the other uh, packets. And I'm looking at this one and I'm a little, it says to use for the body of the eggplant. Okay, well maybe now it doesn't look so bad. 3740 and it just seems like it might be a little a little light and I guess I'm gonna have to start stitching it and see which I'm in there um, I'm doing that on 18 count Ada and I am finding that putting two strands of floss through 18 count Ada can irritate my hand a little bit so anything I'm doing on 18 count Ada I am going to have to stagger um, it's just going to be what I need to do. Now, I had my Mayfly May schedule that had everything on it. I don't know where it is. I know I took a picture of it and put it on Instagram so I can go back and look at it there. But I don't know where it is. I don't know what's next. Uh, I think Fairy's next. All right. Rest of haul. So I did the Peruvian cat sampler and I did it in these silks from Ymir, but I also ordered more silk. So I, I had ordered another one of the wine. I did my drama llama sampler with that. I'd ordered two of the writer's chair because I didn't know how much I was going to need. Um, obviously I have most of a skein left still plus this. And I got another skein of Moss Boss, which I just really like. I think that's really pretty. This is Gingerbread. So another nice brown. Tantalizing Teal. And Rose, which I think is just really pretty. So those are some silks. I've been thinking about, I'm going to do the Japanese Seasons. Uh, sampler from Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, I'm going to do that for a friend. I had 
originally thought, if you haven't seen it, and I'll, again, I'll try to put a picture in, and if I don't, I will link it below. There's four blocks with the Japanese character for each season. And I had thought, well, maybe I'll do each block in a different color. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think that's gonna work. Um, now I'm thinking about doing it all in green. Like I have a dark green, uh, Aaron Go Emerald from Classic Color Works. Thinking about that. And then of course I'm going, do I have enough of that or am I gonna have to order some? I don't know. Now, school finals start Thursday. I am for the next 24 hours caught up with my grading. Finals start Thursday and then my students will turn in their final papers the next Wednesday, so the 12th. Um, and I'll be giving feedback to, everybody has a draft of their paper due tomorrow night. Um, I'll be giving feedback, I'll send those back, they'll send me the final drafts the last day of finals, I'll grade, put grades in. And then I'm off for like six weeks until summer two starts, because I'm supposed to teach uh, summer two. And I'm thinking, maybe I'll take a day trip to San Antonio. There is a uh, needlework shop called The Ten Smith's Wife. If you've watched Jan Hicks, you've seen you've probably seen her go there. Um, it's on the other side of San Antonio. And I'm thinking I might take a day trip up there. Why not, really? Hi. Bergie is carrying a sock because he's a doof. So I'm thinking about going up there and I might try to pick something out there that's dark but more heavily variegated because um, I would like for the variegation to show up. I don't know. But when it comes to other things that I have planned and going, Oh, where is it? There it is. Okay, so one of the other starts I have planned for uh, he is the loudest animal in existence. Like, I don't know how an animal as small as he is. I mean, he's not small. He's a huge cat. I don't understand how he makes that much noise. Hey! Bergie! It wouldn't be a floss tube if it wasn't yelling at the cat. Okay. One of the other starts I have planned for this month is uh, another modern folk embroidery. I'm starting all the modern folk embroidery and I am not sorry. It is the distal fink folk. <laughs> the distal fink heart, which is a good luck charm. Um, and so I ordered from my very favorite Caroline some floss. Leo and Roxy Floss to do the Distal Fink Heart with. I know Caroline was doing it in purples and I'm going to do it in these grays and blues. So this is Steel, Cinderella, Delft, and Royale. And these are eight yard skeins. So I, and with four colors, I have no doubt I should be able to get everything done with that but aren't these just aren't they lovely look at that the variegation in that delft i'm gonna do a pig section in that Gosh, my ring light is a little bright I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the lighting guys okay so i'm doing that now other new starts that i have planned um i showed off a peacock in my last video that's been living in my head. I've kitted it up, it's ready to go. I just need to do it. I just need to start it. The other thing, my husband found on eBay, just cross-stitch, this is the issue from July and August of 2011. And I, I'm gonna do this guy. I am so excited. Because I've done the first one, and then I know I had this, um, but I, I think I must have lost a lot of cross stitch stuff when our garage flooded and our, our when we first moved to Texas, um, we had a house out by the water and it flooded every time it rained more than five minutes, um, 
and I think I lost a lot of cross stitch stuff. Some magazines. I lost my Cur Teresa Winsler Christmas book, which is driving me bananas because it goes for like $150 on eBay. But anyway, I know I love bright colorful birds. I'm not sorry. I love this. I know I've got the Joblin in my stash ready for it because I bought it at the same, I bought two pieces at the same time to do both. And I love this because my other great grandmother, one of my other great grandmothers, when I was a kid, she had a big picture in her dining room and it was colored beans, like dyed pinto beans, and they were mosaic into a rooster picture. And I think my mom has it still. And I just, it reminds me of Mammal. So I love it. All right. Other piece of haul, new start that I am going to work on. I just got this in the mail. And this is the Satsuma Street Alice in Wonderland. This was a mystery stitch along. Um, I am not obviously doing it with everybody else. Um, but my friend Sarah is a Alice in Wonderland scholar, like, no shit. Um, she edits a journal about L. Frank Baum, because she's cool like that. So she and I are gonna stitch this one together. So uh, we got the kits, and we're gonna stitch this one together. And I think I'm gonna do the 25-7 with this um, as soon as she gets her kit. And I'm gonna work on this 25 minutes a day, seven days a week and see where we go because this is actually quite large it's 184 by 184 so i'm looking forward to this um and then i think when i'm finished with it i'll put it in my office with my other literary cross stitches like miss bingley and the Lily morris pieces and my anna green gables and all of that and so that that's going to be on this uh 28 count ice blue lugano and i think this is just as white art but I also have all of the, almost all the floss. I have to get some, they were out of a few at a one, two, three stitch. So I need to go pick up a couple of skeins and then I need to throw those extra skeins in the mail for Sarah. All right, I have two more things to show that one is not so much haul as it is something that my husband made for me. Look, it's a little holder. So I asked, I, said something to him asked him if he could make me a thing to hold my scissors and so he went and he got you know this piece he had a little is it just make it out of something scrap so he got this little piece of four by four and he did some holes in it and it holds my my tail tucker and my pencil and scissors and it just sits over here. I need to put some felt on the bottom to make sure it won't st scratch my table. But then I also got an early uh, Mother's Day gift. This is a Mother's Day gift that will go live in my office, tucked away behind things where only I can see it. I'll probably put like pencils and stuff in it. I love it so much. <laughs> I know it's not necessarily this, the nicest thing ever, but I love it so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, it has made me, it has made me giggle every time I've looked at it. It's perfect. And so I think, like I said, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in my office right by my computer back in the corner where students can't see, but I can, so it'll make me smile. All right. So as far as plans go, I actually have no idea what my uh, Mayfly May plans are because I seem to have lost the schedule, but I know it's on my Instagram. So if you're looking to see what I'm doing, uh, you can check it out on the Instagram. Uh, that's also linked below. So this is a 35 minute video, which is kind of long for me, um, but I also know I have yacked, 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 yacked really fast but I am going to go put my stuff away and take advantage of a few more minutes of my kids being gone to stitch in the quiet, assuming loudmouth doesn't continue on. Anyway, 
see you next month. I don't know when I'll be back at some point. Have a great, uh, have a great week. Be kind to somebody that includes yourself. Bye y'all.